So legislation is one of the big questions when it comes to AI. How do we go about making sure that this technology's benefits are felt by all and they're felt fairly, but also that we counter the harms and make it as difficult as possible to misuse these technologies? are trying to figure out how to embed and utilize generative AI in their businesses. They've heard of the power of ChatGPT, they've seen the amount of people who are using it. But I really feel that we need to make sure that we resist that knee-jerk reaction to use it for the sake of using it and actually build a comprehensive generative AI strategy across your business to make sure your data is being used effectively, to make sure that your customers are getting the value from potential applications, and also that your employees are using it in a way which actually benefits them and makes them more productive and isn't just a novelty that actually is a solution looking for a problem. So my top tip would be to interrogate your organizational structures and resist that knee jerk to just put something in place for the sake of putting it in place. So at the moment, we're seeing this rush of excitement and hype around generative AI and uh, synthetic content. Um, and this has really led in some respects to a bit of a Wild West dynamic about how people are using these tools. Are they using them ethically? Are they being used in a way where consumers are being protected, their customers are being protected? And so for me, as someone who's been working on responsible AI and responsible generative AI in particular for about six years now, I'm used to working with organizations, helping them understand how they can do this in the right way and how they can make sure that both reputationally and also legally they're protected for the long term. So my top tip again would be when it comes to incorporating responsible AI in your business would be to look at the end to end pipeline of how that's going to impact your data, your employees, your customers, and indeed your compliance with certain legal um, frameworks. This is such a fast moving space, it can be hard to understand what the legislative landscape might look like in, in two months time or what consumer attitudes might look like in two months time. But if we look at these key core responsible AI practices and messages, we can go a long way to future proofing AI in your, in your business. So one of the most exciting use cases I've seen is the ability for generative AI to be used to really open up a world of content for audiences in a way that feels personal and feels specific to them. So often people who don't speak English or maybe Spanish or, or Mandarin often have to deal with dubbing on content that they watch. Um, you know, clumsy uh, lip syncing or not even lip syncing, just having their language dubbed over the top. Whereas now we're seeing tools being developed which can automatically generate the right lip movements for a person speaking in that language. And that means that content no longer feels like it's kind of being, um, you know, bodged together just for that person. But that actually, this is really sort of for them. It makes it feel more authentic. And indeed, this is an area that I find really fascinating with generative AI. And it's something that a lot of businesses and organizations, I think, are um, trying to understand is what does authenticity mean in the age of generative media and AI generated content? And indeed, for me, authenticity no longer is opposed to the synthetic. And in fact, we're seeing experiences like these, like being able to create much more personalized um, content for people. Um, helping people engage with that content in a way that they weren't able to before. Or people interacting with, for example, virtual influencers and building these kind of slightly strange but interesting relationships with these characters. Or indeed living in kind of virtual worlds as we're seeing with certain extended reality and virtual reality applications. And generative AI will be the engine for a lot of those applications moving forwards. So for me, there are so many exciting use cases in art, in entertainment, in accessibility, um, and in communications and, you know, advertising and marketing as well. But I think for me, the ones that really interest me and I think are really exciting are the ones where we can make experiences that we have every day better for the individual and more authentic and more relatable. So generative AI as a term really kind of exploded onto the scene about a year or so ago. Um, 
But before then, many of uh, my colleagues and I have been referring to very similar technologies uh, that use voice cloning or generating non-existent images that are very realistic as deepfakes. And indeed, deepfakes for a long time now have been causing quite significant challenges for businesses, for governments and for, for other organisations. And one of the key points of uh, concern is cybersecurity. We've seen, you know, deepfakes open up a new way of not just hacking kind of humans, but also machines. Um, when it comes to, for example, using synthetic voice cloning to clone the voices of CEOs to get financial controllers to send money to a bank account, or using voice cloning to clone a loved one's voice to make it sound like they're in danger and need help or again, financial assistance. Now, these technologies can both fool the individual, right? They can kind of hack the human um, uh, mind, so to speak, into believing that it's that person. But then they can also um, uh, compromise biometric authentication. So we've seen reports, for example, of people being able to access bank accounts using a synthetically cloned voice of another person. So when it comes to cybersecurity, you know, we're so used to trusting audiovisual media in particular as something that can't be faked or can't be manipulated. But we need to radically reassess the landscape of cyber threats with the advance of generative AI and deepfakes to make sure that we understand what it is we're up against now. And this is not theoretical. This is something that's happening right now as we speak. So generative AI, deepfakes for cybersecurity are a huge new frontier and one of the most challenging ones for biometrics and indeed for kind of cybersecurity and, and business security procedures, which now might be outdated based on these new developments. So legislation is one of the big questions when it comes to AI. How do we go about making sure that this technology's benefits are felt by all and they're felt fairly, but also that we counter the harms and make it as difficult as possible to misuse these technologies. Now, from the US to China, the UK to France to India, all over the world, countries are trying to build AI strategies to both embrace innovation and build both economic success and also the power of AI within their own governments. But also they're looking to make sure that those harms aren't proliferating and that the companies that are developing are doing so responsibly. And that balancing act is really hard, particularly as we see this kind of geopolitical dimension of this AI arms race between the big powers emerging, where everyone is rushing to build these, uh, the most powerful systems they can. And so the harms are indisputable. And there's something that we should be really worried about. At the same time, we also want to be careful that we aren't completely squashing innovation and that we're not just allowing other organizations or other businesses in other countries to get ahead. So the regulation question right now is occupying much of the brain space of the, uh, of the governments around the world, trying to understand how can we make AI work for us without it also potentially biting us um, um, on the other hand. So I do a lot of keynote speaking and a lot of panel discussions for a wide variety of audiences from governments and big businesses to law firms, educational institutions. Um, and one of the things I always want these people who are attending to come away with is a sense that they have cut through the hype and the noise. This is such a noisy space. There is so much speculation. There is so much sensationalism around the technology and that can be both positive and negative. And what I want to do with my experience and my background in this space as someone who's been researching it for a long time has that intimate understanding of the technology is for them to come away feeling that they have an actual tangible grasp on what they need to be thinking about now and then also what they might need to be thinking about in the short to medium to long term and to help them separate out that speculation from the actual state of the of the AI space right now. So having that sense of a grounded understanding, tangible recommendations and a sense that they are no longer perhaps as confused and overwhelmed by the noise in the space and that moving forward, they feel better able to navigate 
the AI space as it continues to evolve and maybe cut through that noise a bit better than before.